But um, JD, the the bit, the clip I wanted to to to, to play you. I, I'll just remind you in the audience about the um, design science idea and the the idea of the design science DJ. Uh, the idea that we could have a design for what we do. You you seem to be gradually accepting the idea that you do some form of design. Yeah, but I, I, um, d- I don't physically get the paint pot out and paint it or anything like that. Or <laughs> yes, I can see the idea, but uh, the concept of it. But it's the sort of thing which, I, terminology, I wouldn't actually put the two together on myself. You wouldn't. No, I wouldn't. you think design and science are sort of separate. Yes, I'm still not convinced. So if somebody can convince me, I might change my <laughs> view. Okay. Well, I've 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 um. I've got one bit which I think is on more or less making your point. I don't know. We'll see, we'll see what you think of it. Okay. It's um. It's from the from the BBC. I'm 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 doing a course on um, learning design, and they're very keen on reusable objects. And this is this is stretching it a bit because I don't think the BBC actually invite you to take their bits of audio, do they? But this is for the purpose of review and comment. So the the today program is usually very good, and this is a good example. And I'll, I'll see if I can get get this to to play. It's from um, it's from the sort of New Year review that they do. Sometimes people look for parallels between science and writing or the arts in the act of creation. Do you think there might be more sort of common ground and interest there in trying to think of how we are creative and whether in different domains that you've mentioned the creative act may be more similar than we think. I think it is. I think daydreaming is a crucial element for both novelists and scientists. The luxury of uh, solitude, which I think is one of the privileges of civilization, and to use that solitude to dream your way into something new. There, I think, we are in, in each other's camps. One of the things which I think is a mistake is that science is always viewed as sort of chiseled in stone. Um, and really, Quite often it's not like that. As a researcher, I know, um, particularly at the beginning of projects, I have no idea where to go. It's like walking through fog. Mm. And I think it's very important to keep options open, to, to actually emphasise the ambiguities in the situations that, that you have. Do you sense a sort of um, some overlap there with the sort of thinking sometimes I in think writing? Wa- walking through fog is a very good analogy and can describe uh, the process of writing a novel which I think of in broadly in terms of an open-ended journey. Maybe you've got a sketch map, you've got a rough idea where you might be going, but in part it is an investigation, and you're always hoping for surprises, to surprise yourself or for the material to take on a form that you could never have predicted at the start. And maybe one way in which we could describe both uh, literature and science as being um, part of one process is to talk about curiosity. Perhaps we don't really need to be just thinking here's science and here's the rest of life or here's science and here's literature or all of art. The impulse to know something is key to having the gift of consciousness. We can think of science as organized curiosity. I really do promote curiosity because quite often as a scientist we're having to respond to pressures to produce this, to achieve this, yeah. and to discover this. And I always say, just let us indulge our curiosity, and in the end you will get what you want. That kind of exploring is, I think, the key to a peculiar kind of happiness. Not the happiness of laughs and smiles, but the pursuit of something difficult and the absorption in it. So, J.D. is... Uh just at the moment checking if his hard disk is working because I'm going to go off and um, find, find our guest we hope um, so maybe we'll come back to that but I think the idea of curiosity and some form of happiness we'll see if we, if we get to that point um, 